Well, good morning, Connecting Point, and Happy New Year. It's not going to be the first Sunday of the year, which was last Sunday on New Year's Day, but this is going to be our first Sunday together in quite a long time, so I'm looking forward to being together again. And this uh, first gathering of the year, we usually do a year review, or more like a report on what's happening in our climb ministries. But to bring you up to speed, um, in case you're not familiar with our structure, I just want to introduce you to Climb Intercultural Society, which is the society that our church is one of the ministries of. And so CLIMB, which stands for Christian Leaders in Mission Building, CLIMB is a registered charity in Canada that provides an administrative structure for a variety of ministries. And these ministries include our church, Connecting Point Church, Stand Firm, Got Game, Ministry Coaching Network, and Micah 6-8. And we'll be hearing a little bit from and about all of those in a bit. Our board of directors for Climb Intercultural are Tracy Cowie, Tyler Friesen, Matt Levy, Matthew Todd, and Phil Jusky, and myself. And as well at our meetings, we have input from Rebecca Friesen and Mark Cowie. Um, at church in the morning tomorrow, we'll be sharing our financial review. So if you want to know about that, you'll have to be there. Um, but first, I just want to share a few things about our society in terms of what are our organizational values and also our beliefs. But first, with our organizational values, and these are important because these are the things we try to filter everything through. When we do ministry, these are sort of the, we could say, the governing principles. And so the first of those is servant leadership. We believe that reproducing leadership can only happen within a context of servant leadership. Following the principles of leadership modeled by Jesus, leaders should seek to serve rather than be served, pursuing God's purposes, not their own. The second value we have is mentoring relationships. We believe that Christian leadership is not about using authority for one's own purposes but rather to use God-given influence to develop others through mentoring relationships. Coupled with servant leadership, this is, we believe, the most effective way to develop leaders. Thirdly, a team approach. We believe a team approach to ministry is a biblical approach to fulfilling the Great Commission. Teams reflect a tangible model of servant leadership and provide an example of mutual accountability. Effective leaders are those who function well with within teams. Uh, fourth, a unity emphasis. We believe that Christian leaders should have more of a kingdom focus rather than merely what God is doing in any one group or denomination. Christ-likeness requires seeking unity with those who adhere to the core of the gospel rather than causing division over secondary issues in essentials unity, in non-essentials liberty, and in all things charity. And fifth, catalytic influence. We believe that the role of the leader is to be a catalyst. Rather than holding on to power and position, they should be releasing others to be effective in their own context so that those they serve will reach their God-given potential. We value people and their development above buildings and programs. So those are the five governing principles that when we do things and organize ministry, those, that's what we keep in mind as the things that will uh, help us to achieve what we want to achieve, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. But first, we also have a statement of faith that we adhere to. And it was important for us that our statement of faith was a statement that also uh, reflected particularly our core value of unity. And so, in an effort to reflect our value of unity, we want to express our beliefs in a way that promotes unity among those who believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior, the authority of God's Word revealed in the Scripture, and the mission given to the Church by Christ. It is with this in mind that we have chosen to adhere to the Lausanne uh, 
covenant established in 1974 and signed by evangelical leaders from more than 150 nations. And you can view this covenant uh, at uh, www.lausanne.org, and it's there on the screen. Um, so that's our, that's our statement of faith, and you can go and look at that in detail. It's, it's a little bit long, um, but um, I think it's very important that this statement is a unifying statement and not a dividing statement. One of the things about that statement is it talks a lot about the mission of the church. And this is uh, where I want to kind of go with our um, time right now. And I just want to do a little, uh, basically a devotion on the ministry of reconciliation. But first, before we get into that, I've got a table talk for you. And the table talk is this. How has your relationship with Jesus influenced your identity? For this section, we're going to look at... Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, I believe it is, <laughs> starting in verse 14. It says, For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So out of those two verses, verses 14 and 15, there's, there's three things I want to point out. First of all, that Christ, out of love, died for all. Leading to the second point, that all who identify with the death of Christ have also died. And how is that? They have died to their sin. And so there's a release now from the bondage that sin brings to a person. And the result of that is a change from living for self to living for Jesus who died and was raised. Let's, let's read uh, 16 through 20. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come. The old creation is gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he was committed to us, and he has committed to us the message of reconcil reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. <clears throat> so what does living for Jesus mean? Living for Jesus means, first of all, in verse 16, regarding no one from a worldly point of view. Now I'm going to take a, a table talk here and, and let you kind of explore this. And the table talk question is this. What does it mean to regard someone from a worldly point of view? How does following Jesus change the way we view others? I hope that discussion was fruitful. As I was thinking about this, there were certain things that came to my mind. And how, well, how do you view people from, from a worldly point of view? And, and one of those things is, if I was a businessman, I would view people as potential income. Or if I was a politician, I would view people as potential votes. Or you can probably find, figure out your own, and maybe you've come up with your own examples. But the, the, the thing that's interesting about that is, I think, a worldly point of view is always quite selfish. We always look at people for, well, how can they benefit us? But Jesus is giving us a new way to look at people. As he says, we no longer look at people that way. And so how does that happen? Well, living for Jesus means there has been a transformation from old to new. In verse 17, the old is gone and the new has come. And so there's been this basic transformation in our life, in our mind, in our heart. And this transformation happens through Christ reconciling mankind to himself. 
And that's an important word, reconciling. There's, there's two things that have to be in place for reconciling to happen. First of all, there has to be an admission of wrong. And secondly, there needs to be forgiveness. And so this transformation happens when we come to Christ in repentance, understanding that when we do that, that he forgives our sins. And in that, reconciliation happens. And I know in our world, there's a lot of talk about reconciliation, you know, on, in the media and in politics. But I haven't ever heard anybody there talk about reconciliation through repentance and forgiveness. And that's the, those are the conditions that are necessary for reconciliation to actually happen. And we as Christians, we understand that. We come to Christ with our sin, and we understand that when we confess our sin, that he is just and able and forgives us of our sin, according to John, 1 John 1, 9. As a result of that, not only is there reconciliation, but then Paul teaches us in this text that believers are then given the ministry of reconciliation. And that is the kind of the lens that we see people through now. Instead of the lens of the worldly point of view, we see the, through the lens of the ministry of reconciliation that we see every person that we come in contact with as in need of forgiveness. And so we have that in mind for them. So we have this ministry. And what does this ministry include? Well, first it includes a message. This includes the message of reconciliation, which is forgiveness. And as Paul says, you're not counting people's sins against them. And it also includes, in the verse 20, the being Christ's ambassadors. What does that mean? That means that we are the present and visual representation of the kingdom of God or the kingdom of Christ. And so, coming back then to our first table talk, as you think about it, how has your relationship with Jesus influenced your identity? And my hope is that for all of us, that our identity has been changed and transformed. The old is gone, new has come. The worldly way of looking at life and people is gone. And we are more and more becoming his ambassadors with a message of reconciliation. And we see ourselves uh, in that role as reconciler, as we partner with Christ in ministry. And that's the whole reason that we have ministry and an organization to facilitate ministry is to help us all move toward that, that new identity. So with that in mind, I'm going to now segue to our ministry reports. And we'll start with um, just a, a short report from Tyler on Connecting Point. Hello. Um, well, I can give you a bit of an update on Connecting Point, And uh, I'll start by recapping the year that that was and I think my big takeaway from the last year is that I've, I've been really grateful to be back in uh, the building at Victoria Hall. It was really great that the city of Coquitlam was able to keep that spot open for us and continue to give us um, a good deal <laughs> on the use of the facility and um, that we have this central location for us who are all commuting from <laughs> different places around the lower mainlands to be able to meet together and um, so it's an, it's an interesting group and uh, an interesting place to meet and uh, we're going to continue to be meeting there doing our thing around the tables. Um, last year we took some time to study David's life and then we jumped into the book of Romans and we're actually going to do the same thing this year in reverse. We're going to start by finishing up the book of Romans and then we're going to be um, taking a little, that'll take us almost to Easter. We'll do a little detour into uh, John's gospel to study uh, the the Passion Week and that uh, that sequence where Christ is going to that um, that place where he's he's <laughs> exemplifying for us what the ministry of reconciliation looks like and so we're going to be um, looking at that but then we're going to be jumping back into the life of David and watching his kind of unraveling as he as he matures as a king and and um, it's been a really rewarding study I think through these things over the last couple of years um, so we'll. We're looking forward to that. Um, I should also mention that we had a really uh, enjoyable experience doing a men's retreat in November, and uh, we've got uh, opportunity to do more things like that, but we don't have any firm plans on uh, 
specific groups of people who are going to make retreats. I know Dad Doug is still doing uh, his Tuesday study, and we don't have any other plans uh, for further studies uh, right now. But it's like he said, you are the connecting point of the ministry of reconciliation into the world around you. And so we want to encourage you, if you, if you want to do a study, if you have people that you want to do a study with, or if you have... Um, kind of an idea for material that you're looking for, like talk to me, talk to Doug. We're happy to help resource you or to, to kind of point you in the right direction. And um, we're happy to kind of walk you through getting something going or, you know, if the timing works out, because we're all busy, <laughs> um, but we, we can also be part of it. So like, let us know if you've got vision for ministry. This is what we're here for. So um, connecting point, I, it's a pleasure to be serving you and to, to work with you and um, to get to learn how to be the royal priesthood together. So, thanks. Hi, Connecting Point. I'm just going to talk a minute about uh, Stand Firm. And it is a program that we started about 10 years ago, actually, going into our 11th year. Um, and it's a wellness program of how do you get well spiritually, mentally, emotionally, relationally, um, functionally. And um, so it's been a real joy to be able to uh, serve the people in the Hope for Freedom Society um, over these last 10 years. And my role, I think I mentioned, um, changed from women's director to uh, chaplain a couple years ago. And so now I get to go into three different houses. Two of them are men's houses and one is the women's house. And um, we see be somewhere between two and 300 people come through those houses every year. And um, it's a joy to be able to teach on, first of all, having a strong spiritual foundation. And it really dovetails nicely with the work that they're already doing in completing the 12 steps um, of uh, Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous. And um, of course, those first steps have to do with coming to a place where you can admit you have a problem and then humbly seeking the help of a higher power and um, submitting your life to the direction and the will of that higher power. And of course, we introduce Jesus Christ as the higher power. And so it's, uh, it's just a lot of fun to watch people uh, come to faith through this process. And um, uh, this year, uh, I am really happy to be able to add another um, part to the program that I'm teaching um, specifically on covering how to get to know your Bible. So if you have um, a moment or you're thinking in prayer at some point about this ministry of uh, Stand Firm, uh, please remember to pray that there will be a hunger and a thirst among the clients for the Word of God and um, help me to be able to communicate clearly about God's Word as God wants to reveal Himself more clearly to each person through who Jesus is and we get to know Him through His Word. So I appreciate your support and prayer. Doug also leads a group at one of the men's houses on Wednesday night and he's taking them through his discipling through intentional um, relationships and uh, that's been going really well. He's been doing that for just over a year along with um, Andre and and sometimes Matt comes out and you know it's great to have the extra support around that too. So thank you for your prayers. I'm going to talk a moment about our ministry in Abbotsford called Got Game. It's led by Chia and Jeannie Ashton. Ashton. And the, the thrust of their ministry is developing young people, developing them in their 
uh, leadership skills and character, and also having opportunity to share the Lord with many young people. And the vehicle that they use is sports, and particularly basketball, as Chia is a bit of a basketball fanatic, and that's in a good way. Um, this last year, uh, Chia and Jeannie and their family have been attending uh, Abbotsford Pentecostal Assembly in, in Abbotsford. And that has really turned out to be a blessing for them as most of um, their activities had been held in public schools. But throughout the pandemic and the, the buildings and gyms uh, were closed to them and uh, it's been a bit of a issue trying to get back into the public schools and using their facilities. And as it turns out, um, uh, Abbotsford Pentecostal Church uh, has opened up their facility to Chia and uh, they have a gym that uh, is working quite well and uh, here's just some comments from Chia um, about how APA on Friday nights has opened their facility and it's, it's lifted a huge burden and it has been a, a welcome change for their Got Game Basketball Leagues and just in the fall this is just this last fall, we had 64 players coming to our two basketball leagues and 15 coaches. So every Friday night, that's 79 young people coming together um, at the church gym. And they're just having a great time. And uh, planting seeds, and he says, who knows how God wants to use those seeds planted. And our, I know that our basketball leagues are a great place to plant seeds, help players grow in character, and develop into the leaders who will coach and lead the next generation. And so they've been very busy, and that's just one part of the, that was just from the fall, and uh, Chi has been busy all year with uh, leagues and workshops and doing his players to leaders material and mentoring young people and mentoring coaches. And so keep Ch Ch Chia and Jeannie in prayer. And uh, as they go forward, and we anticipate a great year coming up in 2023. The other ministry that we are involved in um, at Climb Intercultural is called MCNet, which stands for Ministry Coaching Network, which is an uh, international network that uh, includes... Um, Leaders from various parts of the world, including uh, Europe, R Russia, Ukraine, Africa, and uh, uh, Central America, and particularly um, the Dominican Republic. And uh, our big news this year has been that we've launched our material called Coaching Through Intentional Relationships, which is uh, basically a curriculum centered around um, competency-based training. And we've been able to launch that in uh, Santo Domingo, and we have a group of leaders being trained through this material and through the mentors that, have, that are learning this material and have learned it, as well as uh, folks in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania that have started uh, working and developing as leaders over there. So that's going to be where we're going in the future, is um, keeping on promoting this material. Um, I've been using the material to mentor uh, and to work with two of our leaders from Russia. And I meet basically every second Thursday morning. And um, as we go through this material, these are mature, advanced leaders who are going through the material for the purposes of uh, figuring out how it will fit into their leadership training. And of course, this has been a difficult year, obviously, for our Russian Christian leaders and our Ukrainian Christian leaders. And uh, I just urge you to keep uh, people in prayer um, and for their protection, and as well as we keep praying for peace as well, and uh, so that the gospel can go forward. So thank you for, for doing that, and that's our MCNet report. So uh, I'm pinch hitting for Mark and Tracy. They're going to be speaking in person tomorrow uh, at uh, Connecting Point. But um, for Micah 6 8, um, it's very exciting that Mark and Tracy have a trip planned for the springtime or late winter or early spring uh, to Guatemala. They're going to be gone for a month um, and it's going to be the longest trip that they've made uh, in their uh, mission 
help capacity that, um, that we so encourage them. And, and um, they've been a real blessing to Will and Diane down in Guatemala over the, the years. And Will and Diane might be facing a time of transition coming up in the next little bit. So we should be praying for Mark and Tracy as they're going to be going and, and helping out with all the things that they help out with their surgeries involved. And there's a whole bunch of stuff. And it's really a, a huge blessing to the, the rural Guatemalans. And um, we should also be praying for Will and Diane. I know Mark and Tracy also have some other plans looking at Africa and looking at some other locations this year. So keep them in your prayers. Travel is opening up and that's a good thing, but it's been a struggle to get uh, anywhere. And um, and it really is one of those things where they they come alive and they their their heart is for these ministries that are are um, doing good work around the world. And so we want to encourage them and, and uh, encourage uh, these different ministries. And it's a really neat thing to see and to hear, even from the MCNet thing, to think about the reach that Connecting Point, small as we are, kind of gets to have even uh, uh, all around the world and, and to hear these stories of the gospel going forward and of the good work of Christ going forward around the world. Um, so, yeah, be in prayer for that. Just to finish off today, um, I want to bring your attention to a, a scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And this scripture is really interesting because it is sort of the working out of the, of the ministry of reconciliation. And it's, it's also a scripture that um, is kind of a, a motto or a theme for Climb Intercultural. And the scripture says this, 2 Timothy 2.2. 2, and, and it's Paul writing to... Uh, Timothy, who he, Paul's basically Timothy's mentor. And he says, And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. And what they model in there is, is basically this reveals four generations of the message being passed along. You got it going from Paul first to Timothy, and then Timothy to this group he calls reliable people. And then the reliable people will also be qualified to teach others. So a fourth group. And that's the whole point of the word of God and, and spreading the word of God. You know, Chia is spreading the word. Um, MC Net leaders around the world are spreading the word. Uh, Mark and Tracy travel and they're spreading the word. Right At Connecting Point, we're all about the word of God and, and doing our best with it. And then stand firm, you know, spreading the word and, and bringing the, the healing word to people that in need. So this is, this is what we do. And this is the ministry of reconciliation. And this text really um, illustrates the, the power of it going through generations of people. And so keep that in mind as you pray for Climb Ministries that the word of God would be spread and it would pass down from group to group to group. And so that's our final table talk assignment, is to conclude, um, take some time to pray for the various ministries that are represented, that represent CLIMB. Thank you.